How Felix Cavallari knew that Groovin' was going to be a big hit. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. The new book is Felix Cavallari, Memoir of a Rascal. There'll be links in the description of this video where you can pick it up. And if you want to see the long version of this video, you can see the entire thing via the link in the description of this video. You and Eddie, uh, on, on like Groovin', you know, to me, that song is going to be played if we're still around in 10,000 years. There are, I mean, all your songs are like that. And uh, uh, but but that song, did did you know, did 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 you know you had something? Well, uh, you know, you know, you know, basically the, the way you know anything is is by people's reaction. You know, I mean, like uh, in the old days, you know, uh, the record company Atlantic was pretty small so that the the staff was right next door to the recording studio. So the secretaries would actually hear the playback. And if you got a, if you got a, if you got a, a, a kind of a yes from them. Ah, good. And then we could always tell when our manager came in the room and started dancing. You know, we said, well, this could be good. This could be good. Of course, not that he could dance, but he felt it. The only way you know, seriously, is by audience participation reaction. You know, in record companies, they used to do tests, you know, for that to, with, with, with audiences to see, you know, what records were hits and that. You know, there, there's a difference between a spontaneous hit, you know, and a bought hit, a purchased hit. And, you know, for anybody, you know, that doesn't know that, it's called advertising. If I spend money on your radio station, I can play what I want. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, basically, Good Level was a spontaneous hit from the first time we played it in front of human beings. They yeah, jumped yeah. up and danced. That's the kind of, I mean, I have so many stories I could tell you, but the bottom line is that's what we all dream about, spontaneous hits. Yeah. that the Was it really based on uh, uh, working out girlfriend schedules for, uh, or is that, well, oh, that, that, yeah, that's, that's grooving. Yeah, that's right. I was just, I got my songs mixed up, but that was that really based on the fact that you could only see your girlfriends on Sunday? Well, you know, it, you know, basically, yeah, because, you know, like, you know, you're working Friday and Saturday almost every week, you know, and most human beings, normal human beings, that's when they go out with their, you know, their loved ones. So what do you have? You have Sunday afternoon, you grab it, you know? And I don't mean that literally, but you just you just enjoy it. <laughs> did you did you guys play down? I mean, I remember Bobby Rydell, God bless his soul. Bobby yeah, and I yeah. talked, had a good conversation. He sure. said, I read his book and I contacted him right away. I had to get the interview and uh, he was really nice. But anyway, he said he played down girlfriends back then. I mean, he was a teen idol by himself on, uh, you know, being, but was that ever a thing for you guys playing down that you had girlfriends? Playing down in what way? Publicly? The fact that you had girlfriends because, you know, the girls in the audience. Oh, were... yeah, sure. They were like nonsense. Sure. Yeah. Jeez. Uh, you know, of course, they, that's what they did. You know, like I say, the matinee idol stuff. I never had that problem. Dino and Eddie were the matinee idols in our band. You know, uh, you, you, I'll take care of the music. You take care of all that stuff. Okay. <laughs> you know, as soon as I grew a beard, man, everything changed. Everything changed. They said, like, "Oh, what's what happened to him? What when 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 is this?" You know. No, I I mean seriously, that that whole stuff. You know, the, the initial uh, uh, attitude of rock and roll was obviously to attract the opposite sex or any sex. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what sold. You know, product and fandom, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, those fan. I could tell you so many stories, man. Oh my goodness, the best one is, oh God. <laughs> 100,000 people, huh? Dino, he says, man, I get in trouble for this. But he said, we got to get more press. We got to get more press. So what he did is he went out. Now, there's a famous magazine. I will not mention the name. But he, what's the proper word? Seduced may not be the right word. He involved himself with the editor. He was on the cover every week. Okay, so you know whatever it takes, man. Hundred thousand people too. <laughs> Hundred thousand people, you know. Hopefully, there's no lawsuit in there because, oh my God. But anyway, it's a true story. He just, you know, he wanted to get publicity. He's, well, what? what is, you know, Henry, as a matter of fact, wrote this great song. I don't know if you ever heard it called "Sleeping My Way to the Top." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
Remember, the new book from Felix Cavalieri is Memoir of a Rascal, available now. There'll be links in the description where you can pick it up. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. We'd appreciate that. Like them as well. We also like that. And share them in the appropriate groups on Facebook or Twitter or wherever you like. This is John Bowden. This is Rock History Book.